You're listening to the Gab Street Podcast, Columbus, Ohio's number one podcast for underground talent. Every week we have new conversations with interesting individuals who contribute to the Columbus economy and its lively culture. You may find just what you're looking for right in your backyard. Let's get right into it. <laughs> uh, we, we mostly get it through uh, Apple Music and mm-hmm. iTunes and stuff like that. Those are both the same thing. Spot- Apple Podcast. Apple Podcast. As long as, as long as you don't call it iTunes. <laughs> it was funny. too easy for everyone to remember. <laughs> that is funny. There it is. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Good, good. Feeling good? Mm-hmm. Feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good. It's I'm good to be warm. here. We're uh, kind of just disregarding COVID for now, but it's cool. <laughs> it's still you know, there. Still We're taking out. the proper precautions. Yes. To our audio listeners, we've got our masks on and our gloves on. Oh, for sure. Six feet apart. Funny. Yeah, dude. I uh, I'm coughing into my shoulder. It's all good. That's I'm not sure. even coughing. I'm so good at this. I'm not even coughing. That's good. No, I, I got it, I got it covered, man. That's funny. We're all good to go. Today is episode sixty-eight, I believe. This has been, they're blurring for me now, but <laughs> this, this is episode 68. We have a guest as per usual. He goes by the name of William Fairbanks. Say hello. What's going on, everybody? It's good to be here. Thank you for having me, Corey. I appreciate it, man. Of course. Anytime. <laughs> yeah, man. As always. I'm excited. But Corey, what am I doing here? We have <laughs> Eric Basso making his co-hosting debut on the show. <laughs> He will be Hello. returning as well. You'll you'll start hearing him a little bit more often here. Uh, as as if you're an avid listener of the show, you know we cycle through co-hosts quite often. So uh, we got a we got a dedicated list of people, and uh, cool. he's making his debut today. So welcome Eric Basso into the Gab Street family as of today. <laughs> Hello everyone. Yes, <laughs> the pedestrians know who you are now. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yes, I do call my fans pedestrians. <laughs> That's, That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have a sponsor today. You will hear a message from him in the middle of the episode. He goes by the name of Luke Chioka. Uh, he is a producer living up in Westerville. He does make uh, beautiful orchestral music that you would think was recorded in a concert hall, but with his fingertips with FL Studio. It's crazy. He's done a lot of good work for filmmakers, for independent uh, musicians. He's done work for nonprofits. So if you have a need for orchestral music, classical music for your project, please hit him up. We got some links to his communications in the description of this episode on all platforms. I don't know if it's the uh, same ad you ran last week. It is. But uh, yeah, as a short filmmaker and somebody who's always being friendly with musicians, in a partly just to use their music in my films at a later date, I was very impressed uh, uh, with with the ad, and uh, it's got a twist in it too. So oh yeah, very fun. Uh, I, I you have my endorsement. Cool, Luke Chioka, <laughs> you have Eric Bosco's endorsement. <laughs> there he, it is. He was so good at making a commercial. He made a plot in it. Yeah, right. he made a commercial yeah, really. with a plot. <laughs> right, right, you right. don't do that very often, man. <laughs> you don't see that. Let's get right into That's it, though. <laughs> We're doing yeah, an so interview do today. The show is is mostly interviews. Thoughts of relocation productions. Mm-hmm. That is your overarching creative yeah, that's conglomerate, the brand. or that that's the brand. That's you would the say. brand. Um, it was yeah, established so, in 2016. Yep. Um, the idea had been in my mind for a minute, but um, that's relocation productions, um, also known by as Torp. Um, shorthand, um, it is a production company essentially, um, that's rooted in the lanes of filmmaking, um, music making, and eventually we're going to get into some clothing and whatnot, but the main two pillars right now are film and music and then writing as like as a general term, like I'm a writer as well. So. Okay. Yeah. Thoughts of relocation productions. Um, am I am I going into it, or is that just mm-hmm. like you want the yeah. overall mm-hmm. arc? You go right into it. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, 
essentially Torp came from the idea. It started off as just thoughts of relocation. And um, I was actually in a dark place in my life. Hmm. It was like 2014, 2013. And I was going through some things socially, you know, with the world around me as well as internally, just trying to figure some things out. And I was um, spending a lot of time in isolation by myself, Mm. um, trying to figure things out, praying, um, meditating, doing that type of thing. And it initially started as a story, Thoughts of Relocation, and I'm actually writing a novel Mm. for it. And that's another story for Mm. another time. Okay. Yeah, so it started off as Thoughts of Relocation, and all I wanted to do was get out of the place yeah, that I was yeah. in. So all I was having was thoughts of relocating, so going your elsewhere. Theme, your thesis. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And it kind of um, started to turn into the concept of not just literally wanting to be somewhere else, but figuratively wanting to improve or wanting to take things to the next mm-hmm. level. So like that's the idea of relocating. And um, actually the essence of it, you know, um, I'm a Christian, so um, the essence of it was like heaven, like thoughts of relocating, leaving earth, going right. somewhere else. But it has so many other um, dynamics around it, around the idea of thoughts of relocation. So that's where it started. Started with the story of thoughts of relocation. Um, and then over time, it developed into like, all right, um, how can I actually like get people behind this? How can I... Not so much sell it, but how can I present it, yeah. you know? Um, and T.O.R., our tour, wasn't really hitting it. And um, I started to think about, all right, I do... Essentially, it started off with the story. And I wasn't even doing film, which is what we'll get into later. I wasn't doing film. Um, and I was doing music, right? Right. And I was like, all right, so how can I tell the story that I want to tell? Um, What's the best lane to do that? And it turned out that film was the best Mm -hmm. lane to actually be able to tell a story visually and sonically and with dialogue. You know, you could do everything. You can take all the arts. It's it's presentation. Exactly. And like and that's it's specifically like what what I think your your greatest strength is. Thanks, bro. I mm-hmm, appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. So then it was like, all right, productions. All these yep. things that I'm doing are productions. So let's throw the P on the end. And now we have Thoughts of Relocation Productions, mm-hmm. T-O-R-P, Torp. So that's the essence of it. That's where it came from. Those are the roots. Hell yeah. yeah. Nice. And I first found out about this at the event that is often mentioned on the show. Uh, shouts out to Visioneers and hey. Danny and Sam Rostein over there. Yep. Danny, Ace on Intrigue. You heard him last episode, maybe, if you went back. <laughs> if you, if you didn't, it. go back and listen to that one real Blood. quick. I love it. But Visioneers is an event that uh, was happening for a while. It has been postponed for obvious reasons, but uh, it was happening at um, Wild Goose Creative mm-hmm. uh, once a month. It was the first Tuesday of every month. And it is one of the coolest events I've ever seen here, where they were bringing people that wouldn't normally be highlighted very much into the spotlight. And people were able to come in and uh, use spotlight without even... It's the vision of your spotlight. Uh, It's funny. Um, But but, bringing people in that that were able to highlight themselves in a way that wasn't readily available before. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I appreciate that event and the people who throw it for the opportunity to meet both of the people that are here right now. Mm. Um, so when you when that event gets a chance to restart, uh, I heavily recommend to all of my listeners, even if you aren't really that interested in film, come check it out. Mm-hmm. Seriously, because it could change your whole perspective, uh, even on this city. You know, uh, there's a lot more talent here than you think. So, Thanks. with that being said, let's talk about one. Uh, project that you presented at mm-hmm. Visioneers. Uh, cool. I think it was the last one that I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, the Flying Nimbus music video mm-hmm. with uh, Obi Ayoha. Yep. Uh, I was very impressed with how that came out. Thanks, and I, I think that your style is always... You have a signature look, and I don't know if it's... I'm going to try and throw out camera terms that mm-hmm. I have no idea Go what ahead, you're talking cool. about. But mm-hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's like, I don't know if you did something with the white balance or right. like the yeah, ISO. Or, um, but 
there's always this retro nostalgic feel and I know you always go for a nostalgic feel in what mm-hmm. you're doing but you just you capture this feeling and you send the viewer or the listener to another time and another realm very effectively evocative exactly yes <clears throat> it's it's always a very well done period piece mm-hmm. and I want to hear the ins and outs of uh, of this production of How Flying Nimbus Went and uh, your connection to Obi. Okay. Um, well, I'm originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I know. We're in Columbus. Um, <laughs> yeah. Show me all the love. Show I'm not a love. sports <laughs> fan, so it's okay. Right. I'm not I mad. love you guys. Um, <laughs> but no, so my boy Obi Ayoha, we go back like full flats on the track. Um, we come from Ann Arbor, Michigan, like I've noted. Um, and initially me and him were doing music together hmm. we had this collective and i kind of like branched off and started to do film and his main focus is still music and he's actually working on a couple different projects and for this one this is off of his ep and forgive me obi if you watch this and i'm wrong um off of his ep that was recently released called bumblebee and i think that's right i had it up yeah, yes bumblebee yep. yeah bumblebee and what we were doing for it was the EP was about four tracks, five tracks, and um, we did a video for almost all of them. And Flying Nimbus was actually the first one that we did. Okay. And um, it actually gave me the opportunity to try a lot of different techniques that I had seen, like in films. I'm like, oh, I like that. I want to try mm-hmm. it. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and the way we shot that, we didn't even have like a game plan. We... I knew a location, and I knew the shots that I wanted. Mm. I knew that I wanted an establishing shot. I knew that I wanted some close-up shots. I knew that I wanted some overhead shots. And the rest of it was just like, let's find the location. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And get these shots. And that's how I do a lot of my pieces. I know that I have a list of these are the shots that I want to get. And then once we get those shots we can go somewhere else with it. You know what I'm saying? If we can try Mm. some other ideas. So, um, a lot of those, um, when you talk about the nostalgia, and um, I I tend to, a lot of my pieces, I tend to wash out the picture a little bit. Okay. You know, as far as, Mm. like, um, I don't want it to be super saturated. I want it to be saturated enough. Mm. It's like a Polaroid? Exactly. A Polaroid piece. Are you looking at something that's dated? You know what I'm saying? That's what... Your blacks aren't deep. They're like faded. Exactly. They're faded a little bit. I like to wash out the image just a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, because I don't want it to be bland. I definitely want those colors to pop. But I definitely want to have my own style you know i consider mm-hmm. myself an artur so i want when people to see my stuff and i take that as the highest compliment when you say hey i can identify with what you're doing mm. and i can identify your pieces and it gives me this feeling and you're creating your own world i take that as the highest form of flattery because that's exactly what i wanted to do i mm. wanted to tra- i want to transport the viewer from wherever they're at, you know what I'm saying? They could be in the city, they could be in the country, they could be, you know, on a subway yeah. ride, they could be on the bus, and I want them to be able to leave wherever they're at mm-hmm. and be completely submerged in the the world and the picture that I'm presenting, mm-hmm. you know, visually and sound. Right, right. It's so, escapism. Exactly. And and it's interesting, I, I didn't know about uh, uh, your faith before, and it's, and if uh, like, I, you know, viewing the Bible as parable, it's, that's what filmmaking is a lot, too. Mm-hmm. It's like, a, we're, we're, like, tell, that's why we can have violence and, like, stuff mm-hmm. that we don't really, <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's all, it, it's all part, it's all for the message of, like, right, of, of right, what you're doing. Right, I gotta tell this. Right. So that you can catch this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and th- like, I'm going to get like always video was a music video. Right. But in all actuality, the worlds that I'm looking to create are much deeper than that, mm-hmm. more broad than mm-hmm. that. Um, I'm, I'm a writer. So, you know, there's not much dialogue in that. But the whole getting back to Obi. Right. So with that video, I want it to be able to say, let's tell a story without going too deep into it. Let's see what we can do with just the pictures, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, cause his overall idea was to let's connect all these videos together. 
right? Mm -hmm. And like, let's make like a documentary style thing that that this is all one big project and it mm. relates, which is, is one big project, but he wanted to do it with the visuals as well. And my whole thing was, all right, cool. So how can we have these this overall story, but each video is its own mini story. So versus me just saying, all right, stand in front of the camera and rap to me, spit to me. Mm, it's yeah. like, all right, let's make this interesting. Let's mm. make this intriguing with the way that we set up like let's put some emotion into the picture as well so that's one thing that i try to implement as well i'm really big on color um that was mm. another thing about the picture it had like the yellowish tint to it while it was um shot in like the green fields and whatnot and his car was at, um also yellow his his jacket was also yellow um so i like to do that as well like play around with colors as well you know yeah so. Uh, that's one thing that contributes to the signature feel is that everything's super deliberate mm -hmm. um, and you framed it well and you made sure that the jacket was yellow and I, I think something that you achieve that not a lot of people can say that they do is that if I were to watch something that you made and no one told me that you made it I would be able to tell that you made it <laughs> that's love you, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I think I'm not one to brag, but like, yeah, <laughs> I've got a little bit of that too. <laughs> you two are yeah. unique among. That's, yeah. that's why we're here. Yeah. But I, I think I think both of you achieved that in, in a way where I can watch that and be like, oh, that's a that's an Eric Basso mm -hmm. film, or that's that's a Will Fairbanks film. You don't even have to tell me who made it. Right. You know? And right. that's that's what it's all about. Right. And the terminology for that is archerism, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, archerism is I believe it stems from the French wave, which happened in the late. 1950s it sounds French yeah. and um, yeah. essentially what it is is the director is the author mm. so they're not just directing they're actually their their handprint is on it from the from the pre-production to the production to the post-production they're like there you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying they got their and stamp exactly their yeah, stamp yeah. like for instance like and what we're going to talk about later but like um, like Quentin Tarantino you know you know his pieces oh yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. from the extreme limits that he goes to with the violence to the dialogue to the picture to you know um oh, you can, the dialogue exactly you know <laughs> right, like, yeah, right, that's right. him that's because he had his imprint on everything from top to bottom and that's one thing that I aim to do with all of my pieces. So again, thank you for that. Thank you for recognizing. I think that. now that uh, he's been brought up, uh, I, I was definitely we might have to do a bit of a diversion here because uh, specifically with with you and Tarantino, like um, I think the first thing of yours I saw, I said was like uh, Tarantino, Scott Pilgrim, and. <laughs> Yeah, you so, did a, a third very flattering thing. You did yeah, that. but yeah. uh, I, I, Sam lost his shit. It was so <laughs> <laughs> That was love, though. I felt that. Um, I, I, I feel like, and, and I think I even said it at the time, too, that without feeling derivative of it, mm -hmm. you do what he did in relation to like remixing all the movies that like he you mm -hmm. know watched working at when he was, but like you do that with his movies mm -hmm. and with Scott Pilgrim and this and that. Exactly. And like, we've reached the point where we're officially at the next level where things are all going to be influenced by Hi. the last thing. Exactly. And like, exactly. It, but it takes a confident hand and uh, it takes uh, someone who's pretty smart. And I think we're both pretty smart guys. I appreciate that. To do it in a way that's not, uh, uh, obvious or like uh, mm -hmm. feel like you're tra it's it's just being cool you exactly. know it's just like actually being cool but exactly. like in, in like I can't actually be cool but in my <laughs> movies like yeah, you're if, yourself. I, if you put the intentionality right mm -hmm. it's like dressing right yeah. it's like yo it's presentation exactly. it's taste and presentation that's exactly. what directing is like exactly you see something that you like and one thing that I've been preached to my whole life is like there's nothing new under the sun. Mm. So while it used to annoy me when people be like, "Oh, you sound like such and such," or "You look like that," so mm. and I'm like, "Yeah." Mm. Now I'm starting to understand that. Yeah, before Quentin Tarantino was Quentin Tarantino, or Wes Anderson was Wes Anderson, mm. they were like, "You sound like somebody from the French Wave," or "You sound right, like somebody right, right. from um, you got that from like a, a film noir." 
or something like and that. Even like, before they did what they did, their ideas were right. Yeah. Even before they had them. Like, if something works, like, the, it the, works. The, the, the truth is there before we get there. You right. know, and like that, it's even though like art is subjective, objective, whatever, <laughs> however you view it, like, right. uh, like there, there, there are guidelines. Right. Those, there are certain that science things. is there. That yeah. fundamental and foundation is there. That's why you got to use both half of the brains. And that's why it's a, a very distinctive. And another thing I think about like being a filmmaker that, um, I, 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 I tell people a lot is that like, uh, somebody else can just pick up a piece of paper and draw something and pick up a guitar and do this but we got to make sure that this person and this person and this person mm-hmm. it's coordination and it, yeah and it, mm-hmm. like it takes a degree of uh, inspiring faith in p- people yep, in, yep. in you leadership yeah, yeah leadership my oh, my boy was talking to me about it just the other day shout out Wax um, he was telling me how he's a director right and then it started to make sense because he's like um, he told me his path to becoming a director, he's like, mm-hmm. first I had to learn how to set up lights, and then I, I had yeah. to learn how to, you know, um, I had to learn <laughs> how to rig poles, and I had mm-hmm. know, I had to learn mm-hmm. how to drop, um, to um, lay drape, or whatever. Right, right. And it's like, that's exactly what a director is in filmmaking. It's like, yo, I know how to edit. Mm-hmm. I know how to write dialogue. Mm-hmm. I know how to color grade. <laughs> I know how to do sound. You know, and that's... That what makes a, a a true art tour who's like mm-hmm. yo, not so much micromanaging. They obviously find the people that will help them and they find trust right, in. Right. But it's like yo, I know if I need to get in there and do mm-hmm. some editing, it's not just up to you. I'm not just putting it on right, their hands right. and saying, all right, let me let me hope and trust. It's like nah, bro, that's not what I was thinking. Right. I wanted a I wanted a jump cut here. I didn't want a crossfade. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm able to. To, to do if I need to do what mm-hmm. I have to do to get what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, it's all insert, and, and it's not even like I, I have wrestled with my ego enough. Like, and I don't know if you, and I don't know if faith would help <laughs> me in, in that. It's like faith <laughs> but, but, like, um, in terms of like the instinct of saying, oh, I could have done that better, or this could have been that, or that, like. As on a personal level, it's just like, oh, I kind of hate myself when mm-hmm. I think that. But like, if to have faith that for me, it's all in service of the story mm-hmm. in the world. And you talked about world building a little bit. Like the best storytelling is it feels like this world exists mm-hmm. already. And then you tell a story like within right. that framework. It's close enough to reality. Mm-hmm. It's that close enough to reality where it's just like, yo, I can picture myself there. I could see myself. I was at that right, place the right. other day. Obviously, it was a different color. It had a different yeah. hue to it. Right, right. But I was there. I had that conversation. Mm-hmm. It might not and, have been and, and it extreme. felt like a crossfade instead of a hard cut. Right. You right, know, exactly. and it felt like this. And it's like trusting in your like when you, when you go when you get to the point where you're trusting in your gut feeling, mm-hmm. you just have to just hold your breath and just just go right. with it. And right. like, <laughs> I agree. It's such a strange like. Uh, I agree. But I, w- I wanted to circle back really quick because um, mm-hmm. we were talking about how. Um, the age of an era of directors Mm -hmm. is kind of coming to a close and it's opening up to new directors. Mm -hmm. Um, Just studying Quentin, right? One of the things that he said, he's like, yo, pick your favorite film and write it backwards. Hmm. You know, he's like, yo, Mm -hmm. that's what he did. You know, like, there's literally scenes in his films that he was just like, yo, I like the camera setup. I'm going to take that mm-hmm. and I'm going to apply it to my story, mm-hmm. you know? So I like to pay homage in a sense. Mm-hmm. I like to respect mm-hmm. the yeah. people that came before me, which anybody in any field should be doing. Right. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? It's like, you got to know where it started. You got to know where you came from to know where you're going. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you don't want to, I never want people to watch my stuff and say, is that a Quentin Tarantino film? Because he's not the only director right, that right, I take right. from. Right, you know right, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And that's how it... That's one of the things that I try to hang my hat on. It's mm-hmm. like, yo, see what you like. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, I like the color red. 
Mm-hmm. You know, such and such don't own the. I like right. pineapples. You right. don't right. own pineapples. Mm-hmm. You know, I can get a shirt that. Mm-hmm. that you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I might not get it with the white background. I think specifically, like to to, to put a, a detail with it, uh, I think um, you used a uh, yellow font at some point. Yeah, I one love of the yellow first font. Things, so yeah, like and then it's just it's so like I don't know if it's specifically Pulp Fiction, but mm-hmm. like it's it's a very. Uh, uh, it was evocative of, of Tarantino to me, and I only I only connected that dot because I have to be aware of these mm-hmm. things, right? And like to a, 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 a lay person, like it's just it's, dope. It yeah, yeah, good. yeah, absolutely. So let's put this in context. I I would like to talk about the jet streams, okay? And let's I think it. a lot of what we have been discussing is mm. put into action mm-hmm. in the jet streams, and it, it's just all there. So I I, I want to hear. The ins and outs of, of the jet streams and okay. what it means to you. So jet streams kind of stemmed from, and this is a way that I operate too. I, I was working on a shoot where I was just like, yo, I'm going to get a rep in. I'm going to do some practice. And I was I was um, with a friend and um, we were all there and we shot it. And is this a staircase? Um, no, this is the one where we're in the park. The, okay. where, like, the, um, it's like a nostalgic, like it looks like an art park or mm-hmm. whatever. But um, literally, that was a rep. That was just me getting some practice right, in. And yeah. then it was like, yo, this is dope. Like, this, I saw this story. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw this story. Essentially, so that people have an idea and they're with us. It's about a group of girlfriends who all share the same love for music. And in particular, this band, right? Called the Jet Streams. And um, the Jet Streams, they are really secretive. They're the type that have pop-up shows. So um, their favorite band, the Jet Streams, is having a pop-up show in the city. The girls are trying to find the show. That's the whole mm. premise. It's a short. They're trying to find out where the show is. And um, the pieces that you guys saw where I was just doing the introductory pieces where I was just bringing to the forefront these different characters and giving you a little background mm-hmm. of who they are, um, that was being used to get support whether it be financially, um, with other resources, not just fiscally, but it was to be able to say, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what it looks like. Proof of concept. Proof, exactly, Mm -hmm. it was proofs. So um, that's what it was, and what you guys saw is going to be the story. It's It's so great because the nature of it being evocative as it is lets you use that to, like, your prospective, you know, investors or whatever. It's Mm -hmm. like it makes you... Oh, I, it, I, it evokes like the image and the story in the see. world, and it's like, oh, th- all, all this needs is me? I just like. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's one thing that I, I try to, to be keen on is, and that I've learned, is when going and asking for something, like, you have something, you know? Mm-hmm. Versus just saying, hey, I got this crazy idea. You know, it's like, no, th- yes, I have this crazy idea. Take a look at what I have so far. I have the roots. I have the roots. Yes. Now I need your water. I need your soil. I need your sunlight mm-hmm. to grow this thing. And um, yeah, so that's what it is. It's it's really big on color. It's really big on dialogue. It's going to be simple. It's uh, going to be about 10, 15 minutes long. Okay. Um, but I want to really showcase my artistic views. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I don't want it to be super heavy i want it to be light but at the same time i wanted to have message i wanted to have you know i wanted to really and i chose to do a group of females because like i wanted to be like a goonies you know mm. what i'm saying oh, okay yeah. where they might not be searching for treasure but they're a group of friends who share the same interest they've grown mm-hmm. up together they get on sh- exactly mm-hmm. the show is the treasure for them yeah. so that's that's the jet streams, um, and as you like saw in those introductory pieces, like Roxanne and the jet streams mm-hmm. are, you know, um, blue and the ivy and the um, indigo and the jet streams. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's coming together. Obviously, COVID put a you know damper mm-hmm. on things, but once things really start to clear, we're jumping into production. So it's coming together. We're gonna go ahead and take a break and hear a quick message from our sponsor, Luke Chioka. Hi everyone, my name's Luke Chioka. I'm a film composer and multi-genre producer. Thank you for listening to the Gab Street Podcast. 
I'm here to tell you that I'd love to bring your next project to life. Whether that's a short film, advertisement, or rap album, I can produce for you with uncompromising quality. In fact, the background music you're listening to right now was composed by yours truly. I've composed for feature film, local artists, and nonprofits. You can find me on Instagram at Luke.Chioka. That's C-H-I-O-C-C-A, YouTube, and Fiverr. I look forward to working with you. Thanks and take care. Before I move on to the next topic, I just want to acknowledge that I wish all trailers were like what you made. My man. Mm. Because for the past few years, and since you guys are more engrossed in the film community, I want to hear your opinions on this Mm -hmm. because I've been pissed off about this for years now. Uh, I think that when you're watching a modern movie trailer anymore, you're watching the whole movie. Right. Yep. Oh it, yeah, it's absolutely. Terrible. Mm-hmm. I hate it. Yeah. It's like, what, what is the point of me watching this anymore? Exactly. Uh, you're showing the entire yeah. plot. Exactly. And, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Because I mean, even even when they're not like, um, I, th- I mean, the most recent like terrible example for me was Rise of Skywalker. It's just mm-hmm. kind of was like, oh. Yeah, uh, this guy's not dead. <laughs> but the rest of the commercial, uh, commercials are 15 seconds. Uh, there's this part of the movie, this part of the movie, this guy, and, this, and this guy's not dead. Uh, and then this and this. And this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, okay, great, cool. Right. <laughs> like, like, already... Now I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah for but sure. But if, if that... What, what if... Especially for comedies, too. They do, it, like, yeah. a lot of the jokes as it's well. It's bad, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they use the best jokes mm-hmm. in there, and so mm-hmm. then all the rest of them are shitty. Like, yeah. when you're watching the actual right. movie. Yeah. But imagine if J.J. Abrams were to, like, for episode seven, mm-hmm. for example, just did a character showcase with no dialogue. See... Le- that for, was for basically Finn. what it was. <laughs> oh, for, for, what, well, like for, for, for me, it was a... It was a, hey, introduction to all these characters, not much happens that is new, <laughs> you know? So, like, it is, it is... Are you a Star Wars person at all? Or? I'm a huge Star Wars okay. person. Right. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a fan of the last three. Right, right. Mm. You know, I'm... Did you have I any least favorite? <laughs> um, <laughs> three. The third one. Yeah. The third one really made me upset because I went to the theater for it. Uh, and I'm like... So did I. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> like you guys really this is lazy. For me yeah. it was lazy. Mm-hmm. And to address your note about the um the trailers mm-hmm. really quick, like I think that the issue with not just JJ Abrams, RJ who who directed that? The third well, yeah, well he's one in three, JJ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like not even to hit him upside his head, but just a lot of what's going on in today's society is fluff. Like, mm-hmm, hey, mm-hmm. um... Bad presentation. Yeah, bad presentation. They know um, it's all presentation, and there's... Some, exactly. They're just like, yo, let's, 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 um, advertise to the simplistic part mm-hmm, of the human mm-hmm. condition. Mad men Where it's shit. just like, hey, yeah. just blow up, blow up, blow up. Watch these effects. Watch <laughs> these effects. That's all you want to come see. There's just, and the thing that I love about old movies, like, I love the fact that they didn't have that. Well, obviously, I don't go back like super far back because I'm like mm-hmm. I can't take this right, right? Right, right, right. but it's good to know where film started but there was a sweet spot where story mm-hmm. you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying like the first three episodes um what is it three four no, yeah four five, four, five, five six yeah. story mm-hmm. drove those mm-hmm. right I watched them for the story like mm-hmm. yo this is this is captivating it's about dude doesn't it's really about know. faith man like I think like that's that's my favorite religion it's just, just like I, di- I didn't like uh, uh, Solo as much because there were no like Jedi or like lightsabers and it's like I, I think that that's that's what my you know spiritual but not faithful like soul right, you know, finding like, something that mm-hmm, hope that mm-hmm, hope mm-hmm. but that's I think that's the issue and it's not even just the, the trailers it's mm-hmm. everything because when I go to it and I'm like yo this is super vanilla mm-hmm, there's not mm-hmm. much more to it then that's why you can watch a trailer and get the whole synopsis mm-hmm. of the movie and be like, oh, because yeah. Because they want to make it even easier for you when you do go see the movie. It's just yeah. like, oh, I know what to expect because I saw the trailer. It's, right. This movie is this, 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 and this. Exactly. It shows off a certain appeal to, you know, the term like essential living mm-hmm. when, we're, when we're talking about like, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, it's it, when, <laughs> back when the, the, the CGI wasn't 
over the top Pacific Rim yeah, 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 type yeah, 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 of yeah, yeah. type of technology, and you had to just work with hanging a saucer from exactly. a string. That's exactly. then you have to focus on the story more, mm -hmm. and you have to give that more credence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that more effort has to go into that part of it, and I think limiting yourself a little bit when it comes to and, and putting a retro mm -hmm. look mm -hmm. on. And that's the right. essence of it. Exactly. The essence of. I think filmmaking is the story. Mm -hmm. And I think that people are forgetting that. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like the essence of music is the story. Mm -hmm. And it's not all the boom, doo, 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 doo. Mm -hmm. like, it's the not innovates. all of that. Yeah, it's not all that. It, if you can, if you can tie it in to the story, like I have no problem having an instrumental, like just listen to an instrumental yeah. right. that tells a story, you know, but yeah. It's, All those effects and stuff. And most stories, like when it, when you get to like, well, especially with music, it, it's like even it can be as simple as, I I feel like this, and that that is the story. Exactly, it's and the like feeling that, that we were talking and about earlier. So, like with music or film or this or that, it's your presentation of that feeling, exactly. whether whether it's literally like a story, like. You know, if the, the uh, if sadness is the story, it's just like uh, a guy shot my mom, or this right. series of notes, right? Or the you know, blue. this yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It's it's that's storytelling. A, that's it's so real. I was just talking to somebody else about that the other day. It starts with feeling, and then you you create a story mm -hmm. from that feeling. Mm -hmm. I I agree with that one hundred and ten percent, and that's what I try to do with my pieces. I want people to watch my stuff, and like you said. Not even know, like, oh, that's well. But then even deeper than that, like, I want you to be able to feel from the picture. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this, the, the retro makes me feel a certain type of way. Or, you know, the yellow makes things, it makes it pop a little bit. But at the same time, it brings me back to, like, the 90s or, like, Family mm -hmm. Matters. When Family Matters, when mm -hmm. our full house popped mm -hmm. up on the screen. Like, as a child, Pushy you're like, fun. yeah, and it's like, man, it's not even about full house. But yeah, it's it not reminds me of as a child, yeah, yeah. as you were a child. And it's like, oh, man. And that's what I want to do. I want to remind people like, yo, remember this? Remember this, how mm -hmm. you felt? Mm -hmm. Let me take you back. You know, and I try to do that with all my pieces. So. Mm -hmm. And that's why you present it as a nostalgic fiction. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's the tagline. Exactly. And nostalgic fiction, that's actually um, for specific pieces, you mm -hmm. know, that I'm doing. It's going to be a nostalgic mm -hmm. fiction. So, like... Um, um, Jet Streams, Nostalgic Fiction. Um, the Story of Her is another project that I'm working on, Nostalgic Fiction. And that goes down to the way that it's shot, like as far as um, the filters that I put on it. Mm -hmm. And it's all going to be able, you're going to be like, all right, this is the Nostalgic Fiction collection. And it's all mm -hmm. going to be able to fit together, even though it's not the same story. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a brand. It's like... Um, Pixar, you know what I'm saying? You know, right. Pixar is a Pixar movie, you know, and it's under Disney. Mm -hmm. So while Torp is the level, nostalgic fiction is going to be something right. under that. And okay. I, I don't know if I, maybe all my pieces will be right. nostalgic yeah. fiction. Well, it gives you the space to experiment even beyond exactly. your experimentation outside of that. Exactly, stuff. Yeah. exactly. So nostalgic fiction is where it's at. And it's just like, I want mm. to drop that little hint mm -hmm. in there. Because like, the fact that you peeped it, because it just flashes. It doesn't really stay up there long. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah, nostalgia. You know? At the same time, it's yeah, fiction. I mean, yeah, it's, it's such a, a good descriptor for what you know we, we eventually saw. That mm -hmm. it's just like, uh, it sticks with you. And exactly. it frames your mind for what you're about to watch. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Even though it's barely there. Yep. Subliminal. Mm -hmm. even, yeah. yeah, exactly. It, it sets you up. Exactly. Um, yeah. We did... Uh, I mentioned QT, um, but back to Scott Pilgrim. I mm -hmm. think what 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 really um, it, it, that had a whole like comic book series and movie for me to get attached to those characters in this like big social circle. You know the mm -hmm. music scene of Toronto, but like uh, they killed that movie. I love that. Movie. Oh, absolutely for sure. Um, I think Edgar Wright is up there with uh, QT, but definitely a different style of auteur. You know, mm -hmm. definitely more more. I didn't check him out. That's the only piece that I know by him. Oh really, dude? Uh, Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead. Oh, okay. that's what I was thinking. Oh, that's him. Mm -hmm. That's him. I love mm -hmm. Edgar Wright movies, dude. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Very films. very technically. I feel that. Yeah, proficient in it, like. 
transcends into the mm-hmm. other half of the brain and being <laughs> extreme, cool, and arty and fun. Right. So mm-hmm. let's go into those five then. Mm-hmm. So you used to have four. Yep. They were your Mount Rushmore. Yep. I'm now Rushmore. they're your Mount Rushmore plus a monument. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's what we did. Um, and these are my top five directors' influences when it comes to the game. Um, no particular order. Um, Wes Anderson, Spike Lee, Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese, and Guy Ritchie. And I like them all for their own specific reasons. Like, I like the fact for Spike, his social commentary, and I like his mm-hmm. tracking shots a lot. Super <laughs> clean. Um, he does that reverse yep, perspective. Exactly. Thing. And it's moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's, it's a dolly. It's some type of dolly mm-hmm. shot. Um, but, yeah, I love him for that. Um, Wes Anderson, I love his pictures mm. you know what i'm saying yeah. where it's just like the each frame, frame yeah, you could yeah. really like throw up on your wall and just mm-hmm. be like yo someone mm-hmm. took a photograph <laughs> so i love that i love his set building his world building mm-hmm. um i also love how wes anderson makes people look like action figures exactly <laughs> it's my favorite exactly thing. it's that. like you're watching a cartoon <laughs> yeah. but it's live action it's crazy did you see that. the uh, wes anderson horror movie the snl Which digital one? shit it's it's not a real it thing recent. it was recent though yeah. right? it was like five it. or six years ago oh, it's really? uh, we'll watch it afterwards it's probably the funniest thing and yeah, it's, it's it's made out of love but it's like it's a sketch it's a fake gotcha. wes anderson horror movie and gotcha it's Oh, yeah, I love that about him. Um, Martin Scorsese, I love how he does his narration over mm-hmm. his pieces. Mm-hmm. Like Goodfellas, like um, the main character, how he's narrating the whole piece. So clean. I love like it. created a whole new, like, not genre, but like a type of storytelling mm-hmm. with that view. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Martin's dope with that. And he does that in a lot. Like he did in Irishman, too. Mm-hmm. The one that mm-hmm. he just came out with, where he just... Whoever the story is about, he's telling the story. Right. That and, third person. And I, I specifically with the Irishman, um, like I, I, <laughs> the ending of that like made the whole movie, like because mm-hmm. it was like it was a Martin Scorsese movie, and then it kept going, and he commented on what life is like to live and then die as someone who did all this right. Scorsese hey, man, shit in crazy his shit. life. Right. It's like he subverted like his own, you know style just to comment on like being old right and it's like it, it, it hit like he's dope. and i'm a young guy and right. like it hit so like dang man that's gonna be me one right, day. right, right. Get my like joe and pesci order. and the bread and mm-hmm. the wine and all that it's very oof. yeah it's 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 mortal he really showing the mortality mm-hmm. of us mm-hmm. you know it's right. like yeah man i've been doing this and now i'm old <laughs> he, he he captures humanity <laughs> yep. very well yep it's very good but then, like Guy Ritchie, um, mm-hmm. I love how his he's his colors pop, but at the same time, he has a very good way of like capturing like the gangster lifestyle mm-hmm. of like the UK. Mm-hmm. It's so it's re- it's really to the best real- of our knowledge. Yeah, to the best <laughs> of our knowledge, right? to the best of our presenting. presenting. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, say yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah, great yeah, at yeah. presenting <laughs> his <laughs> his perspective. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> It's actually wrong here and here. <laughs> no, but um, I love the way that he does it. Um, his camera angles are super du- dope mm-hmm. as well. Um, and Quentin Tarantino, I mean, I like the way that he goes to the extreme, you know. And I like how he builds tension, like that tension oh release. How it's just like, oh, we know something's Spawn gonna pop. Ranch. We know something's gonna pop, right? Mm-hmm. We know some somebody's gonna get shot, and then sometimes it. Like, just goes to another scene. You know, I'm like, oh, man, you did all that. You, you got me riled up. Like, I love how he does that and how he how he manipulates emotion, you mm-hmm. know, and how he, he makes you feel mm-hmm. with just the different mm-hmm. build-ups and breaks down. So I like each director for different reasons. Um, but like we were saying earlier, I like to pick and choose. Right. Like, hey, I'm going to take that. You see what works it. and what doesn't. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's all homework. Exactly. Sub top five. Give me your top five QTs. Yeah, one thing I want to say about uh, Quentin real quick mm-hmm. is there's a certain carelessness to uh, shooting a guy 50 times in the chest and then immediately <laughs> just talking about cheeseburgers. Right. Yeah, 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 I yeah, just, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the contrast. how he does that. It's, it's, he makes these extreme situations everyday situations. Exactly. 
And, you know? and it's like, this is just life. The it's extremes exactly. that he goes to makes it seem like every movie has just so much shit in it. Yeah. It's just like it's so real. cool. It's like this happens, and there's a part with this, and there's a part with this, and a part mm-hmm. with this. It's just like you think about Pulp Fiction like debuting and like why that movie blew up. It's just like there's like so much shit it. in that movie, <laughs> man. He killed it. What is it? What is your top five of Quentin? Quentin? Yeah. Oh man. Don't look at the wall. No, 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 no. So I like. Um, you don't have to order it. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it's five that I like the most. I'm not mm-hmm, even gonna mm-hmm. order them. Um, Django. Mm-hmm. Um, Pulp Fiction. That's it. That's um, Reservoir Dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, sh- sh- Hateful Eight. I, I really like the dialogue mm-hmm. of Hateful Eight. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. Very Agatha good. Christie. Okay. It's play, super man. slow. Yeah. Super slow. But like a, a lot of people don't like Hateful Eight, but I bangs mm-hmm, with the heavy. Mm-hmm. I love it. And yeah. then um, I like True Romance. He didn't direct it; yeah, he wrote yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But True Romance hits. Mm-hmm. It hits. It's got some great characters. It hits. That. And it's cast extremely well too. <laughs> Yo, if you haven't seen that out there, I haven't. I'm talking to viewers too, man. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, like if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's not directed by him. It's not as extreme. Um, but it's it's dope. It's still extreme. It's, it's, not, it's extreme, not as extreme, but it's not as him, extreme like. as Pulp Fiction, <laughs> and you know, it's, it's not. It's yeah, it's not him no, directing. No, no, no. You could tell that it's no, not no, him no. directing. But it's about like it's like 90 percent Pulp Fiction and ten percent like Go. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's more of a well, I don't know. Yeah. Put labels yeah. on things all, all day. <laughs> yeah, that's from like I like Quentin a lot. So I have a little bit of a turn to take here. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to go a route that uh, the show always goes at some point. So if you if you listen to the show, you know this is always a question I ask. How has Columbus specifically helped you grow as a filmmaker? Man, um, <laughs> it's from Michigan. Dude. Well, <laughs> I, I, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I went to Ohio Wesleyan. I got my degree in filmmaking and okay. creative okay. writing. So shout out to Delaware. And nice. Ogu, um, I do for like that. Um, but the thing that Columbus gave me was just kind of like the opportunity to actually work. Mm. Like so, when I first got out of college, I was doing a lot of um, like party recaps. And what I was doing was I would just show up and shoot them for free. Like, hey, can mm. I shoot this? And it was like when I first got my camera, too. So it was just like, yo, I need reps. I need to, like, practice, it's right? you right now, dude. <laughs> so I would show up, and I would just shoot events. You know, I would take the pictures, and then um, I would also do, like, video. And not even thinking, like, yo, this can turn into something, mm. right? I started to make those videos, and now people are like, hey... Can you do this event for me? Can you come in and recap this event for me? So now I'm getting bread off of it, right? And I'm like, okay, cool. This is allowing me to fuel the dream. Like I take that money and put it into a bigger production or I take that money and and live off of it, whatever. Now I can actually do what I love, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, I was able to go to part-time at my corporate gig because of the opportunities of filmmaking that I was getting out here. Um, And then also... You know, a lot of artists have approached me and given me the opportunity to get the reps in on that end as well of saying, hey, like, I got these videos that I want to do. You know, can you do them for me? And from the ground up, and we're not just talking, hey, come shoot this video. We're talking, hey, like, I got this concept. Can you help me storyboard it? Can you help me script it out? So it's allowed the opportunity to keep practicing outside of college because that's what college got me was prep. I mean, was was getting me the practicing. You know what I'm saying? As lo- along with the theory, but after college, if you don't have that thing pushing you, mm-hmm. if you don't have those opportunities, Structure yeah, if well. you don't have that structure, it fades. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And you know, I thank God for mm-hmm. allowing those doors to open. But I've gotten a lot of love out here in the city. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've I've gotten a lot of resources outside of just the filmmaking that can. Add to the, like I do sound engineering downtown at some places, right? Shout out to the Walrus if you haven't eaten there. Ooh. Once it opens back oh, up, I am familiar. Go out at the Walrus. <laughs> um, I'm, they have music every Friday and Saturday. You know, um, I was able to get my chops at learning how to do live sound engineering, which then led nice. over to 
all right, um, boom micing, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, and learning mm -hmm. how to do that in live um, film situations, mm -hmm. you know, and they gave me the opportunity, and I didn't do live sound at all. Like, I showed up to the interview off of a Craigslist ad, and I'm like, I have the mentality where it's like, yo, if I don't know how to do it, I don't yeah. know how to do it, yeah. and this is what I want to do. And they gave me a shot. The first couple months was trash. You know, people are complaining. <laughs> There's feedback throughout the speakers. But they didn't give up on me. And now I've been there for like two years, hmm. you know, doing oh, their yeah. sound. Like, you know, and yeah. and showing love off the bread, like paying me. I yeah. had this great relationship <laughs> yeah. with them. They hit me up about DJing gigs. And so I have a strong love that I've gotten from the city, mm -hmm. you know, from not just the filmmaking but in other aspects that has allowed me to do the filmmaking. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. Okay. I hope I answered the question. Very well. All right, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. What makes you a unique filmmaker in Columbus? Um, I guess just being me. I'm mean, Growing up, people would ask me that all the time, what's going to set you apart? You know what I'm saying? And it's not even apart from being just in Columbus. It's just me. What separates me... Um, and allows me to stand out in Columbus is the same thing that uh, separates me and allows me to stand out in the world. Mm -hmm. And that is just being unapologetically me, mm -hmm. right? And saying, hey, yeah, I have flaws, but I'm also dope. Like, I was made, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Time was put into mm -hmm. me. Like, I'm here, you know? So versus me trying to see something and I might be inspired by something, mm -hmm. I, I try to be intentional about not taking that yeah. you know and saying hey I'm gonna make that exactly mm -hmm. you know I say oh that's dope like, it's I a like good the thing to learn the mistakes and lessons from exactly mm -hmm. I watch people and I see people in Columbus and they're hustling right and I'm like alright cool I pay attention mm -hmm. right and that's a lot of thing that's a lot of what you need to do you know is just pay attention and say alright they're doing this mm-hmm and now, right. we, now we live in a world where that has happened and now all art after this, you know, is going to, you know, have that context. Exactly. And, but even more so, it's like, all right, I see that happening. Let me make sure that I'm doing me. Mm, yes. You know, mm -hmm. because sometimes I've been in a situation where I see somebody, I'm like, damn. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do that, mm -hmm. but they did it first. Yeah. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And for me, I'm like, all right, cool. How do I adapt? Mm -hmm. How do I move mm -hmm. forward? Because yeah. that's not the only idea that I had. Mm -hmm. That's not the only way that I do it. I say it all the time. I'm like, yo, I can tell somebody, hey, I'm going to shoot a film about this, 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 and this, and this, and this. A lot of people are afraid to give their ideas about out. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, yo, I could tell you down right. to the the time stamps mm -hmm. like i'm gonna start shooting at three o'clock and then i'm gonna <laughs> stop shooting at 333 <laughs> you know and you can't do it the way that i'm gonna do right, it right. because i'm me mm -hmm. you know and i think that's something that people need to grasp and be like yo just do you practice to be the best you because the best you is enough yeah. You you're, know, so. you're unique then you're a filmmaker it's not, it's not being exactly. a unique filmmaker it's like every filmmaker like is you know a, a unique person exactly. I, mean, I, I think it's a, a, a personal thing that like leads to exactly that. and one thing I try not to get caught up in and, and it's no not to social media right but you see these trends that go on mm -hmm. right are these memes and you'll see everyone doing the meme right mm -hmm. and it's like that's cool that's cool, but one thing that you don't want to do is become a cut uh, a cookie cutout. Mm. You know, you want to be able to say, "Hey, this is me. This is mm -hmm. Will Fairbanks." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what at the end of the day, I make art for me. Right. I'm selfish Absolutely. with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to make a film that I want. I can watch at the crib. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be like that's that ego that I'm. Who, wrote, who made this? And laugh mm -hmm. at it as if I mm -hmm. didn't. You know oh yeah, dude, I laugh about shit, but all the right, I like <laughs> cry about it mm -hmm. and be like, "Wow, I was able to get these emotions out of mm -hmm. me and, and present it. It's a blessing." So that's mm -hmm. why, and it reinforces the idea that this world and these themes exist outside of yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what separates me or makes me unique in mm -hmm. the city. You know, it's just owning that. You know, I'm me. 
Very good answer. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, oh, me man. too, though. I'm like, I'm all that for me as well. <laughs> I second that. I second. Yo, I'm going to have to drop a ditto. Same <laughs> as That's funny. I'm going to have to drop a ditto. <laughs> That's funny. Now, last episode, mm-hmm. I teased something that still has not been announced as of the release of this episode. You were talking about me being here. I thought you were very excited <laughs> about it. <laughs> Should we have this weirdo? No, it's weird. um, <laughs> we have something really big in the works. Um, you're going to know all about it here in five days from the release of this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, this question is going to tie into that a little bit. Okay. Uh, give a little context to why we're doing this event. Cool. How has the COVID-19 crisis impacted your craft? Mm-hmm. I would say pros and cons, you know, um, we could start in the con cause I like to eat the thing that I least like off the plate first before mm-hmm. the good. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, mm-hmm. fair enough. We'll start with the con. So the con is like things have slowed up, mm-hmm. you know, I was supposed to start shooting for jet streams and I still have some casting to do, but I couldn't do casting. Um, I couldn't do location scouting like I would want to. I couldn't get out here like I would want to and actually get the production started on the pre-production floor. Um, So it slowed things up with that. Um, It slowed up business as far as music videos and clientele and recap parties. Parties aren't happening, so I'm Mm -hmm. not doing no recaps. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the artists, they can't get their full vision out, so I'm not shooting as many videos. Actually, I haven't been shooting any videos. Um... But the pro is I've been able to hone in on certain projects Hmm. and actually fine tune certain projects where it's like, all right, while I haven't been able to do casting for jet streams, I've been able to fine tune, think about the dialogue. While I haven't been able to get out there and shoot videos, I've been able to make um, storyboards and like see them through. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that I've been meaning to do with my pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, all right, that's the next step that I needed to take was, bro, start doing these storyboards. Mm -hmm. Every single person that I look up to, every podcast that I watch, every tutorial, the person saying, storyboard, you need to storyboard, Mm -hmm. you need to storyboard. Mm -hmm. And me, I'm like... I know. It's like that subconscious (laughs) voice back here, but you never do it. You know what I'm saying? So COVID has allowed me to sit down and be like, all right, I'm about to storyboard this project. Right. Let me let me spend some time writing. I'm not doing anything else. So to wrap it all up, I like to digress a lot. To wrap it all <laughs> up, COVID has allowed me to enhance and practice skills that otherwise were going um, not unnoticed, but malnourished, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been able to feed that part of it, that part of the hustle, that part of the grind, which is going to make me. I'm so excited about these next projects because mm-hmm. I have the storyboards. I'm like, I see it. <laughs> what I've learned from, and I'm, I'm, I'm derailing a little bit. What I've learned from um, taking up storyboarding, right, mm-hmm. is that it's, it's like a filter, right? So you put dirty water in. To a filter and it goes through all these different filters and it comes out as pure water mm. the the vision of the water that you want mm. that's just like filmmaking right the idea starts in your head right and one of the filters is the script another one of the filters mm. is the storyboard another mm. one of the filters is the proof you know what i'm saying yeah. and it has to go through these filters right. and with each step the vision is realized that much more right. and then at the end of it, you know what I'm saying? I didn't miss shots that I wanted. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching them like, damn, yep, yep. That's exactly, that's exactly every shot that I have on my storyboard. You know what I'm saying? Because I've made projects and I'm watching and I'm like, damn, that would that could benefit mm-hmm. from this shot. Or that could benefit from mm-hmm. this shot. Now with the storyboard, it's a little bit more work. But once I get into that production, I just literally can go yeah. to my DP and say, hey, there it is. I want this shot, this shot, this shot, this shot. This. Let's set it up. Let's it's, roll it. There's the 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 theory with the with science where like you can't observe something without affecting it, and I think it's mm-hmm. almost 
telling the story, you know, kind of conjures those last, like, final, like, details to exactly. make it, like, into, like, a it's film. The fine things. It's yeah. the, the little things make up big things. So, COVID has allowed me to learn that lesson of, because sometimes you can't appreciate the lesson until you've done it, and sometimes the, the, the lesson being taught, when you're learning it, can be tough, and you're like, yo, I don't mm. want to sit down and draw mm. not an artist like i want to go <laughs> shoot but covid has said sit down you can't do anything else do this and mm. now even outside of covid i'm going to be storyboarding like mm-hmm. every project whether it's like we can't move forward you got a music video i got to storyboard it right. you know and it, yeah. and it might go into my price or whatever but it's like yo what i've learned is that to get that vision out so it's taught me lessons. COVID has taught me lessons. <laughs> this and is the best way to do it. It's yeah. the best way to do it. A streamlining force. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Sometimes you, you're forced to do something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I can see COVID being... It, COVID has kind of been an optimizing thing for me as well. Mm. I can see that. Yeah. I One, think that's... Go ahead. My bad. I think that's how it's going to be for everybody. Mm. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. One thing that I've talked to some friends about is like, there's going to be people who put that time in. And it's gonna show because mm-hmm. it's been a month. You can learn, you can learn a lot. You can learn yeah. like the foundation of like Spanish yeah. in a month like, <laughs> if you're practicing every single day. You People know are what making I'm saying? bread now. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So, People so are making bread. bread. <laughs> when did you become a baker? When? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was forced to do it. Was Nobody born. was making any bread, but people were making bread. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's like, nice. <laughs> that's what it's, it's allowed the opportunity because I'm not worried about going out. I'm not worried about partying. I'm yeah. not worried about what the next person's doing. Mm-hmm. I'm at the crib chilling and I can get bored. So go clean your car. Go, go. Right. Like clean the crib, deep cleans. There's a lot of things that I took advantage of um, during this lockdown and I'm still taking advantage because we're still in it you know my mindset isn't hey we out here again right. you know my mindset is still I'm at home I'm staying at home mm-hmm. you know so yeah cool I'm glad you're making the best of it thanks my friend you as well you as well glad you guys are staying positive and staying active absolutely so that's what it's about man you got it always gotta stay positive got to it's e- this um it COVID is easy it's a easy reason to find to not do something hmm. or to like say woe is me or like oh the world is coming to an end blah, blah, blah. it's easy to do that you know but there's beauty in the struggle there's beauty mm-hmm. in in hardships there's beauty in pain and that's where i try to keep my mind it's like yo yeah Someone's going to benefit yeah. off of this. It's character development. I mean, that's Fact. one one thing that works like in our reality and, you know, fiction and whatnot. Like right. that that Joseph Campbell shit like is it's it's a cliche for a reason, you know? Right. I mean, I think that Cuz it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Hero's tale. Mm-hmm. It's like everyone loves the hero's tale. Mm-hmm. You go through something, you come out stronger. That was my first great struggle as a writer was my dad was like, "You know there's only like seven kinds of stories." And I'm like, nah, man. Nah, <laughs> I'm so about? fucking creative. What if there was a thing like about? this and this and this? But like, uh, yeah, you got to accept that. So. Right. <laughs> that doesn't change. That doesn't put a lid on anything. Right. It's just like, yeah. it, it's your box. Mm-hmm. I try to have a box with everything. So yeah. I know we digressed. Mm-hmm. All good. Yeah. That's that's all we do here. We're gabbing. Mm-hmm. We are gabbing. Mm-hmm. We're, gabbing like We're walking down the street. We're stopping at different stores. <laughs> We're saying hi to our neighbors. There it is. That's what it is. Plug. Plug. Conversationally. It's true. Right. It's true, man. It's true. I love it. So, to kind of wrap things up a mm-hmm. little bit here, uh, what are your goals for the rest of the year and into the next year, uh, COVID allowing? I'm glad you asked, Corey. That's a great question. Let's get into it. <laughs> no, no, real talk. Um, I'm super boosted about um, the projects that I'm working on. So, I have... Um, a show called Boost It, which is a profile piece, and mm-hmm. it basically um, showcases people that I'm inspired by, and gets their story, shows what they're doing. They're, they're really short pieces, like three minutes long. Really short, sweet. Um, so I have that going on. Then I have the Jet Streams, which we talked about earlier, about the group of friends who are working to find their favorite band in the city who's having a pop-up show. Then I'm actually working on another project right now um, called The Story of Her, a love ballad. So... Um, actually, this is the one that I'm closest to production on, hmm. simply because 
um, the crew's not big. You know, mm-hmm. it's going to be me, maybe like four other people, and then like a crew of five. It's not like the jet streams where it's like, yo, I got a slew of actors, and then I got um, 80s, and you know what I'm saying? Story of Her, it's a love ballad that I'm writing. I'm doing it differently. Um, it's an album in a sense, but it's going to be a visual album. I'm not releasing the music. I'm simply going to be making a short musical about this dude who falls for his best friend, but Hmm. his best friend does not feel the same way. Hmm. And it's basically him dealing with those emotions Mm -hmm. of, you know, while I can't get what I want, and while this is all that I want. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really excited about this. I've put a lot of time, I've put a lot of emotion into it. um, And I start shooting for that in the next, like, three to four weeks. Nice. And... Yeah, I'm it's exciting. Yeah, I'm looking to release like these small projects, mm-hmm. these small shorts that are musically driven mm-hmm. while I work on these right. other dialogue driven pieces, you know, are action driven pieces. Yeah. So. Talk about stories as old as time that keep repeating, like uh, that's uh, yeah, that's love. a that's a big thing. Well, I mean specifically like the the falling for somebody and not like that's Bro. such a you know Cornerstone of age, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the the effort and energies you're putting into it are right. appropriate. Yeah, I'm super <laughs> excited about it, man. I'm um, I'm I'm confident about it. This is mm. one of these because I think that with each step, right, with each project, um, you realize your artistry that much right, more, right, right? Right, right? And I'm at a level now where it's like going back to the storyboarding mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know i'm like oh yeah this storyboard is gonna help me kill this <laughs> you know and being able to speak the language right. and articulate it, you get stronger with those things with yeah. each project right mm-hmm. so this is my latest project this is the one that i'm most excited about this is gonna be my best one yet <laughs> you know what i'm saying so can i ask a personal question we can cut if, yeah sure okay. no ask me, yeah, yeah. Ask okay. me okay okay um uh do you was this inspired by anything in particular? Um, yeah, all and, of my pieces are inspired in some. Go ahead, finish. Mm-hmm. It. And do you feel that you're far away enough to to talk about it? Reflect, uh-huh. or, or or is your reflection part of your process? I think that. Look how you visualize that, mm-hmm. right? The little mm-hmm. arc, <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> graph you did. Um, I think that. Well, with all of my pieces, it's what I've gone through, Mm -hmm. what I've felt. You know, each character, I've met them somewhere along the way, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But for this particular one, it does hit home. Um, And it might not be recent, you know, because a lot of things that I do is, like, music is my release. Film Mm -hmm. is my release. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a pent-up emotion from something that I experienced, you know, in 2010 Mm. or if it was something that I experienced three weeks ago Mm. you know I've had those feelings you know the feeling that I get from listening to the story of her when I listen to it I've had it when I was a child Mm. you know where I had a crush on a girl in the school and I'm like she's out of my league Mm. you know what I'm saying Mm. but like when you're young you're like oh my god Mm. this hurts because that's who you want to be with that's your dream girl but Nah, bro, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Or I've been in it where it's just like, yo, I'm I'm friends with the girl, and she's like, it's not the time. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, it is the time. <laughs> she's like, it's not the time. Now is not the but time. But I'm like, it's the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and now I'm, the time is I'm, not now. Exactly. Now I'm at the crib, like watching stuff and like you know trying to find a safe space because the girl that i want to be with is not having it you know and now i'm like you know what just put it into the music bro just put it into the music and even though it can hurt to listen to sometimes it feels good to listen to it Mm -hmm. because those emotions i'm so okay with feeling Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like my life has been like my mom's blood if you go cry, cry. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, boy, you a man, don't cry like that. It's like, bro, if you go cry, cry, it's okay. You know, so I'm so okay with getting that out. And it helps. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, when you listen to it and you watch it, I say it all the time, I want people, like, to cry. Right. You know, that's what I want. I want people in the crowd to 
be like, leave the theater, leave their seat, leave their computer. Like, hey, I need a break, bro. Mm. You know, because mm. they've been there. Because right. we're all human. Yeah, We've yeah. all experienced those emotions. Whether it's been like um, heartbreak or, you know, letdown. Right. You know, we've always felt that emotion of sadness mm-hmm. from not getting what you want. And that's what I want to And when you it. see that portrayed, uh, especially when you're still feeling that way, it's it's a weird kind of, yeah, it makes you a little bit, but it's kind of, it's a weird kind of positive happiness seeing somebody going through exactly what you're Right, doing. right. It's like we're all in this together. Yeah, yeah. What is that, the um, um, high school music? <laughs> yeah. We're all in it. <laughs> Never seen the movie, but I know it because it's been played so much. I'll play it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, man. That's what it is, that humankind. We're all yeah. human. So, I don't care if you're rich, poor, black, white, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, Mm -hmm. indifferent, straight, gay, whatever, we all experience the same Mm -hmm. things, and that's what we need to get back to, Right. where it's like, yo, I feel pain, I feel sadness, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't have to agree with you, I don't have to agree with your lifestyle choice, but the fact that I can empathize Mm -hmm. with what you've been through, I can love you, and I can respect you, Mm -hmm. and and that's what I try to do with my film, it's like, yo, bro, yeah, I've heard. That's, You've heard. That's funny. I always confused uh, empathy and sympathy, but then I just kind of turned that into my philosophy. <laughs> In terms of not having to have gone through, you know, the circumstances to have that gotcha. emotion. Right. I right, think right. I think it's two sides. This I think it's the same. Right. It's the same thing. It's just a different label. Right. Right. I- yeah, because sympathy is like, I feel sorry for you. Mm-hmm. You know, empathy is like, I understand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I've been through it too. Right. Or, I've felt that. You right, know? right, right. So, I definitely sympathize with people, mm-hmm. but I don't sympathize with everyone. I empath- I try to right, empathize right, with everyone. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, know, yeah. and be like, yo, okay, I can understand that. Bro, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have went, I wouldn't have went right, but mm-hmm. I understand you had the choice and you chose right. Right, right, right. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel mm-hmm. for you. So, um, those are the projects that I'm working on, Corey. So, <laughs> yes. Very nice. And when these projects come out, um, where is the okay. best place gotcha. for our viewers to find them? Um, best place to connect with me is um, Instagram. Actually, any handle, social media. But check me out on Instagram. You know, I'm flooding the Instagram right now. Will underscore Fairbanks. Um, that's where I'm at. Um, Torps is Torpros, T-O-R-P-R-O-S. Um, that's a completely separate entity than mine. But yeah, you can check me out on there. I have a website, thoughts of relocation dot com. Um, that site's under construction right now. Just want to throw that out there. But again, mm-hmm. let me drive home. Will underscore Fairbanks. And you Google that, like I pop up on Facebook and I pop up on everything. So cool. Will underscore Fairbanks. Check me out. Oh yeah. Yeah man. Do you have any last minute shout outs to make before we wrap up? Um, yeah, man. Shout out to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love you. Thank you for everything. Um, shout out to my mama. You're amazing. Um, I'm glad that you're my mama. Um, shout out to um, my friends. Shout out to Mary. I love you very much. Thank you for holding me down. Um, you're amazing. I don't know where I'd be without you. Um, my homie Debo, my brothers, Brian, Stefan, Stacy, Tim. I feel like I'm doing an award show. Anybody that made it possible you for me to get man. here, man. Yeah, man, I'm humbled. Um, thank you, Eric, for coming out and co-hosting. Absolutely. Thank you, Corey, for having me on the show. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to Gab Street, man. Thank you. I wish you guys nothing but the best in what you're doing. You as well. Um, and shout out to everybody out there creating. Shout out to shout out to my top five. I don't know if you one day you'll hear this. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my top five. Um, shout out to all the creatives in in, in the city and in the world. Um, and, you know, I'm praying for everybody, you know, stay strong. I'm sending you guys love and thanks for tuning in to whatever I, I what, whatever I had to say, you know, I'm humbled, <laughs> you know, so yeah, shout out, shout out to y'all. Oh yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for listening this week, pedestrians. We'll catch you next Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Hey. Just like every single week. It's been wonderful. Thank you very much. You don't have to listen at six.